Got big old blue backs. And they are cured out. And look at those, man. Beautiful. Oh, geez, look at that rock. <laughs> Now you can see all four on the screen at one time with one transducer. One, two, three, four. Look how far apart those are set. And that one transducer, just a medium chirp transducer, less than 300 bucks. Beautiful Lake Lanier fish. See, that's a good mark there. We can see that's 39 feet down. There's a little stack of them there. Some more here. Right at the tops of the trees, tempting you to put a bait down right where they can yank it and pull it down in there and snag you up. This is the, the, the lead weight here. And this is your her the herring swimming along. You can see the herring shot up here and it's still swimming along. That's a good sign a fish came by and looked at it and scared that herring. He stretched that leader out really quick and came down. You can still see the herring swimming right along now. Hey guys, thanks for clicking on this one. This is another episode in the Right Here, Right Now series. It's a series designed so when you see it pop up in your feed, if you subscribe, it means when it pops up, that style of fishing is effective right now. And I'll even show you the types of lakes where it's effective. So you get it right here, right now, got a deal going. So we did a few already, we did three or four episodes, and we all started with first deciding what type of lake you have, the most popular, one of two kinds, you'll either have a cold river feeding your lake, or you won't. So this one here is going to be downlines. This is a, also a lake with no cold river feeding it, which is most of the lakes really. And one of the most popular ways is to fish with a downline. It's a live herring, a live shad, on a line sent straight down with a piece of lead on there, and a swivel, and a hook. I'll cover the entire rig and everything in this video. Now, one thing about this, guys, if you're new to striper fishing or you want to get into it and haven't yet, this may be the uh, technique and the time to do it because it is the easiest time to find fish on a fish finder. So if your fish finder is kind of poopy or you maybe don't, you don't have a lot of uh, faith in it, now is the best time to get out there because with the hot water temperatures near the surface, these fish move deeper to get more dissolved oxygen and the deeper they go the easier they are to find because the cone on your transducer gets wider and wider as it looks down so your cone goes down transducer shoots down kind of like a flashlight so it gets very wide at the bottom and you can find fish a lot easier even if your electronics aren't very good so uh pay attention to this one really really cool stuff here in the beginning with uh, my buddy uh striper steve knight he's a guide on lake lanier he, he still books trips too and watch what we do with him he uh what he likes to do is he only puts four down lines out and micromanages each one of those. So instead of putting 8, 10, 12 rods at all different lengths and depths, even though the lake is deep, over 100 foot deep, he only wants four down. And with the transducer, actually this is the first time he saw this transducer I had. It was a uh, Chirp transducer and it was a pre-production uh, TM150 by uh, Airmar. Pretty cheap transducer, 300 bucks or less. And he was flipping. He loved it. Uh, it worked perfectly for his style of fishing and he's actually using that transducer now So it really worked great for both of us. So when you watch it notice Man, this is stuff you won't see anywhere. I'm telling you. It's really cool stuff I'm glad he shared it and it shows how we can watch all the lines with one transducer on one screen and You're micromanaging each bait moving it up moving it down based on the arches. We're seeing on the screen and a line counter helps you get started on your on your reel or on your rod you put it down and you get started you watch all four lines at once and you can see as we're moving these up and down triggering strikes left and right with it just such a really cool efficient way to fish and if you haven't tried it it's very simple we'll break it down in this video it's super duper easy to do and uh if you have some buddies who are, who are struggling with it or want to get into it send them a link to this one this way may put them over the edge here and make them want to get out there because it uh, should build some confidence we've had a lot of fun and a lot of uh success doing this one also pay attention how we're releasing these fish the surface temperature here is in the 90s so you don't want to hold the fish you know like in the cold water where you hold the fish by the lip and wait for him to take off you don't want to do that here because that fish can't spend time in that 95 degree water you know so we'll hold the fish three four feet in the air and dive bomb it straight down even launch it down sometimes to get it to shoot down as quick as possible to get to that cool cooler water 
and had the, the, the proper direction as he hits the water to get him down there. Now, some lakes, uh, they don't want you to stop fishing after you catch your limit or, you know, it doesn't matter how, how big the fish are because a lot of these fish are going to die in the summertime. And I actually don't do a lot of summertime fishing because of this. But when I do, even though I release my fish, I'll count them as being kept. So let's say you're allowed four per guy. You know, we have two guys. Once we've caught and released eight fish, I'm done. I don't want to go, you know, catch 50, 60, 100 fish, let them all go, and they all swim away, and they're all fine. And then the next day, they're floating up. So, unfortunately, in fresh water, when the water is hot, the uh, uh, chances of survival is not very good. In salt water, it's excellent. Even when the water is hot in salt water, when salt water is present, their chances of survival are very, very good. But that's not true in fresh water. So, just something to keep in mind, and I recommend doing that. Just even, you know, even if you're letting the fish go, count it against your creel. All right, the next episode will be cut bait. So these are the four types of ways I like to fish in freshwater. We covered floats and boards shallow. Uh, we did trolling on the main lake. And this here is down lines on the main lake. And then we'll do some cut bait on the main lake Le uh, next. The reason I saved that cut bait for last is because it's also great for fall fishing. So we'll fish up on these points here. Set your cut bait out. And uh, it's great for summer and great for fall. Actually, all times, to be honest with you, four months out of the year, it can be really, really good. But fall time can really be crazy good with it. So uh, that'll be up next. Here's a little footage of me, uh, my boat here. I just figured instead of watching my ugly mug speak, you'll see the boat uh, with some drone footage here. Another buddy of mine shot. Thanks for uh, all support, guys. I really do appreciate it. Please do the like and the subscribe thing. It helps more than you know. And comment, please. If you have any questions, I do my best to answer them all. So here we go. Let's catch some downline stripers. Love you guys. Mean it. Well, down here on the near, just dumped the boat in the water. And I'm here with the one, the only striper Steve Knight. That's right. Ready to nail him today, brother, or what? Yeah, man. We're going to good. We're already seeing them waiting on our group to get here. As soon as they get here. We're just out in front of the ramp here, just looking around with the... New Airmar transducers trying to dial them in a little bit. It's a beautiful day. We got a bunch of bait, some big old spoons, and as soon as our buddies get here, we're gonna cover the water with Steve Knight. Smash them up. There's some big nice big baits in there. Yeah. All right, one, one thing we're doing here, what Steve likes to do is, and he's kind of, man, he's uh, kind of perfected his technique. He's looking here, these are all standing trees here. They didn't f fell all the trees when they flooded this lake. And you can see that's a full, that's 40, that's 40 foot down right there. So you can see, how, guess how tall that tree is. And he's not fishing in these fish that are hanging on the tops of these trees. That can be real tempting. I've done it myself. I've stopped and tried to catch those fish. And, He's, uh, right now anyway, we're looking for fish that are not in the trees. If you find good spots, you know, go ahead and drop a waypoint on them. That's what you got your machines for, you know? All right, we'll get one right there, right between all that thunder. So what are you looking for right now? Really follow on the trail of fish and try to follow them through the school. So a lot of times they'll lead them. You know, if you start seeing a single, double, triple fish, you know, then they'll lead you through the school. I see plenty of scattered fish around here. Okay. You know it. We have four down lines set out here, only four. And right now, we can see all four on the screen at one time with one transducer. One, two, three, four. Look how far apart those are set. And that one transducer, just a medium chirp transducer. Less than 300 bucks. It's an Airmar TM150. What we're seeing here is the steady lines are those lead weights. These are long leaders. So like these, the thin lines here moving, that's the herring. Because these herring can move. We have very long leaders. Mm -hmm. So those little dash, see that one right? See that there? That's mm -hmm. your that's the herring swimming along. So mm -hmm. that's his weight, and that's and you'll sometimes you'll know where the fish is by because all of a sudden you'll see that herring stretch out the leader. You'll see that herring uses all the leader just trying to get away from that. So this is the hearing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
Oh, there it is, right there. GeorgiaWildlife.com. You got it? That's my deal with him, too. Yeah, that's exactly why he left. Oh, there it is. It's the clicker. It's the oh, counter. It yeah, oh, that's oh, on the counter. Oh, I got you. Counters are loud. <laughs> quit. Quit. Don't probably tangle it. There's a bass fisherman moved there with that 20 pound test line. Mm. Leave him in. Yeah, that's a go. nice one, Jimmy. Right there. That's a nice fish. Nice feed going back up. Woo! Yeah, baby. I think you caught one. Yeah, you caught one, buddy. That is a beautiful Lake Lanier fish. Striper Steve style. Awesome. Head first. Beautiful fish. Head first. Right down. Nice, that's the best way to do it. Just give him that rush of oxygen, head first direction, straight down. And that fish is down to 30 feet of water already. I know we're gonna see it on the fish finder. There it is right there. Excellent, man. All right, this is what happened. I'm trying to get the dang thing. I want to show you the screen what just happened Take here. Take them on up there around that troll motor so they don't wipe out that other rod over there. Go on up here. Go way down around that motor. Steve was looking at these two fish right here. And Joe had this line right here. And Steve goes, drop it. And he saw these two. So he dropped it, leveled out. He says, drop it again. He dropped it and went right, bunked that, that fish right in the head. You can see right here. That fish just said, "What? I want it. He hooked up, and that's him bringing it up. And he's hooked up right now. We are using the, oh, it's a good fish. These long leaders make it a little tricky. Good fish. Using that motor guide right there to anchor lock us in. Good job, good man. Job. Good, job. good job. Good job, buddy. We had to read it. Had the play-by-play -play going. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Okay. Yeah. Same exact thing just happened. <laughs> There's that fish right there. I'm telling you, it's not the same one. This was the first one. And that's the one that just happened now. Nope, oh, he's getting underneath, go underneath that motor over here. He's gonna wipe these other ones out. You can go all the way around. That's it, you're doing good. Way down in the water with that thing. All right. Nicely done. Good to go. Hey, told you. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah, a little better fish. It's a little better. Just tangled in that other rod. Uh, which which reels are these, Steve? Uh, the Dakotas. Dakota 500, made by Shimano. Real good reel. Got the line counter in it. I love the line counter idea. A lot of guys shy away. I don't know why. Now my accurate reels, I don't have line counters. They don't make a line counter reel, but we just use this here. It's just a. Those I are mean, almost better. I, I'd about rather have those. It's an inexper It's an inexpensive uh, rod. I think it was like, I don't know, fifty bucks maybe. And I've had them for a long time. Those line counter reel rods, and they they've lasted. We can all do it. It'll be a team effort. <laughs> What's up? What's up, Jeff Blair's Lake Lanier Guide Service. <laughs> Can you call that number and book some trips with you, man. Yeah. What's your website? Uh, cool, man. These guys have been wearing them out right next to us. He just uh, brought that bait up from here, right up into these stripers we came across. He just brought it up to here, and he saw that fish come and look at it. From here, went came and looked at it. Look at him chase that bait. 
These are leaders are a little long, so they can chase them all over the place. Right. There's a good one right there. Looking at right now. There he is. Oh, get it out! Get it out! Get it out! Nice. Alright, throwing motor. Yeah, take him on up front. So you don't hit around that throwing motor. Oh. You put that on him, please. Yep, just like that. There you go, nice. These are healthy fish, man. Good fighting fish, even in the summertime. Right now, the surface right now is uh, 88 degrees. For every second we hold that fish in that 88 degree water, we're cooking his brain. And yeah, we got dead fish floating all over Lake Murray right now. That's where he just released that fish straight down. And it's just, look at that, went right back into that little school. That's that fish. He went right down and leveled off. That's incredible, man, huh? Yep. Yeah, it's a far cry from the flashers we used to use, man. <laughs> look at that. We can see that same exact fish still. <laughs> Takes a little while to learn the striper Steve talk. Go down, go down, go down, go down. No, not you. I was talking to the fish. <laughs> I was talking to the rod. They piss me off sometimes, man. You gotta cuss them. Yeah, I love my little bosses. <laughs> Throw them a rod in real every once in a while. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've had those days. <laughs> Just when you think you've outgrown it. All right, guys, I want to take a second and show you the rig we're using. This is a two watt owner hook, M U T U. I don't know how you say that, but it's an owner two watt circle hook with five foot, maybe a little longer, 25 pound fluorocarbon to a small barrel swivel with two beads. These are two glass beads, always use glass. I know they're expensive, but the glass makes that nice clicking sound. With eels, I'll add you know more three, four, five, so they really click when that eel pulls. Plastic makes almost no sound at all. Now we're using 25 pound fluoro today. You can see it's kind of thick. It's higher than what we need. I would prefer 12, 14 pound maybe, but we ran out. So we're using this 25 today. Weights wise, with down lines, we gotta add some weight, right? We're moving, chasing these schools. I'll start by adding split shots. We don't need a slipping weight in this system here. So I'll start adding a few. We ended up with four today because we were kind of moving around quicker than normal. You can use your egg sinker if you'd like. You can put a slip sinker on there, but these fish are taking the line down and getting hooked immediately. So they don't need to feel the, the sliding weight to relieve any pressure, you know? So the clip down weight does fine. And that's it, really simple. The rod bends down. As long as the rod bends and stays bent, we crank it, set that circle hook in the corner without yanking and go. You may notice this is offset. Nowadays, I really don't use offset personally with me and my guys, but when you have people that are a little less experienced, that offset can save the day once in a while because if you accidentally yank, you know, you get excited and yank, that offset may save you. <laughs> there we can see that's 39 feet down there's a little stack of them there some more here hanging in at 36 39 feet right at the tops of the trees tempting you to put a bait down right where they can yank it and pull it down in there and snag you up there's also a great example where that separation will do this is the, the, the lead weight here and this is your hair the herring swimming along you can see the herring shot up here and it's still swimming along that's a good sign a fish came by and looked at it and scared that herring. He stretched that leader out really quick and came down. You can still see the herring swimming right along now. <laughs> Alright, what we're doing is a little unorthodox. Oh yeah. On the nut? We're just holding the boat in, the, in this turbulence here. The wind's blowing. We're holding right over these fish. Oh, hoo, hoo, hoo. 
That's a fish. It's getting nothing out. <laughs> Stop. Yeah. Look at a bend in that rod. It's got no trees or, in, uh, or 65 feet of water. There are, tre there are some oh, trees. trees. Yeah, there are some trees down there. We got 30 pound test. We can button it up a little tighter. 25 pound leader. But there's a lot of scope on that. Another beautiful fish, man. Lick Lanier. See ya! Good job, Chip. Again, this is him jigging. This is some asked about A scope. This is the down lines here. This is his jig going up and down. See as he's moving his jig up and down, it's the A scope. Now, the A scope shows you what's under the transducer right now at this second. This is just a history back, just showing what we did pass over, and you can see that jig moved up and down. Again, this is live action right here. This is happening right now. That jig going up and down. Look at that. Okay, that one just came up. Which rod did that's you just move? That you? You're 20 feet? Yeah. Oh, that. <laughs> we should have hooked up his right. right Miss the rain coming across Lake Lanier at an angry pace. But there's fish to be caught, guys. So let's get wet and catch some fish. I mean, it's only rain. Here, you must step back. All right, you got it. Came up and hit that spoon. There you go. All right, boys, I'll hold this here. Look at that. That's a beautiful near striver. Nice job, brother. What we're seeing here is our down lines. These are the lead weights. And you can see the herring, live herring swimming up and down right here. Same thing here. That's a herring. That's a herring. These big strong ones are the three ounce weights, these strong returns. Your herring just swimming up and down. We don't have it set all the way to the bottom. These are these are trees right here. I'll back it out so you can check it out. We'll go to the range and 80 foot so you can see the bottom. These are all standing trees in here. There we go. Got him on that. Right here. Right here. There we go. That's what we're looking for. Need to get him come back. Woo! Woo! Trip. Woo! Woo! Trip. Trip it up, baby. Yeah! Yeah. Enjoy it. Enjoy it. He's buttoned up. Look at that. Oh, green, son. Good job. We're doing I say there's a few. Oh, look at him. That is a long leader on that one, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, we can short it back up now. We got some fish. Alright. Let me get the net and I can get him out. Look at that. Look at that! Whoa. There you go. There you go. You set them back where they belong. <laughs> Look at those bass. Good Lord. Oh, yeah, he chased it up, B. Nice. Oh, geez, look at that rock. <laughs>
Catch a lot of fish. Fish on the front. Fish on in the front baby. Get in the net and go catch Get that fish. Him, Come on, B. You can do it. You can do it. Crank him in now. Oh, yeah. Crank him in, man. That might be a big fish, B. No, no, no. That's it's, it's, it's all right. Right here, up the top. Come on, here, B. Nice fish. Woo! Nice. Good job, B. Look Good job, that. B. Do what? Stop. <laughs> Look at that, B. Look at all the stripers. That's the NSC unit. That is the new Evo, the SS Evo. Lit up with striped bass. We're gonna put some bait down, but you're gonna catch one here. We just, yeah. I'm gonna back us up, man. Just straight back in that track. Boat's going in reverse here. I, I, actually, I've been stopped. We just kind of drifted off it. Watch this rod right behind us yeah. here, B. John. Crank him in, John boy. <laughs> Coming back. Set the hook on him, John. Oh, come on. There you go. There you go. Just keep him out of that line. Pull him this way if you can, buddy. Bing him this. Come here, Mike. Bing. Wow, you got one on there. B, come with this fish in. <laughs> That's it, John. Stay on. Come on back here, John. Come on back, buddy. Blow it. Blow it up now, boy. <laughs> Force him that way, John. Pull him. There you go. Atta boy. <laughs> That's right. Green is still lit up. Good job, buddy. In the box right here. Record that screen with that camera you dropped before. Right here. Go catch him, go catch him, go catch him, John. Go catch him, buddy. 